Welcome to Discovering. It's black bear season here in Michigan. It's my favorite time of the year. And I'm back at John Ron's Bear Camp for the fourth season in a row. It's something I personally look forward to every year. So sit back and relax. It's Monday night and it's time for Upper Michigan's very own Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. The call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure, the only way I measure feelings that I have for this fine land. There is so much to discover when you're a longtime lover of northern Michigan. Communication is key. We haven't had a good rain in the UP in over a month, and Mother Nature decided that September 6th, opening day of bear season, was the day to finally give us a good soaking. John told me that bears are like cats. They don't like the rain. Not good. Not good. The weather definitely plays a factor. I mean, hunting deer, fishing, everything, you know, it depends on the moon phase and uh, rain, temperatures, wind even plays a big role in bears, but they definitely love sunshine and warmer temps. So it looks like it's gonna be a good, good weekend for us. We got some sunshine in the forecast for the weekend, so should be really good. John has 14 hunters for the first season hunt. My hunter on day one is Jacob Wedge, and this is his first Michigan black bear hunt. I uh, was watching your show and and uh, saw some hunts with him and decided to give him a call. Uh, I talked to him a few years ago and he was booked up solid for, for several years and I saw on Facebook this year that he had a couple guys drop out so I contacted him right away and was lucky enough to grab a spot. And just like magic, as soon as we stepped out of the truck, the rain stopped. After, oh gosh, three or four hours sitting in the sand, a couple of nice bears came out. Uh, we took a good look at them. They played around for about 15 minutes and we decided to give them a pass. It was just as thrilling to sit and watch these black bears going about their business, chowing down on sweets, and gaining a few more pounds for the next day. Uh, no, I don't regret passing on it. Uh, you know, I know the old saying goes, don't pass on something the first day that you take on the last day, but that was, it looked like a borderline bear, and I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be happy. And hopefully he, uh, you know, if, if worse comes worse, he'll come back over the next few days. When you don't live here in the UP and you only have five days to hunt, you need to make a hard choice. Do you take the first legal bear that steps out or do you wait for a bigger bear? It takes at least nine years of points to draw a first season take in this bear management unit. Some of these guys have 19 points. Do you leave with an average bear and meat in the freezer? Or do you eat your tag and wait another decade? Everyone wants a big bear and Honestly, like throughout the 30 day baiting season, every blind pretty much has, you know, at least one big bear stop at it at some point. So, I mean, there's a big bear in the area of every blind, I would say. I mean, some blinds, a big bear might come in more than others, but you always have a chance to kill a big one. It's mainly just up to the person. I mean, you spend a lot of time and money 
you know, waiting for this tag and do you want to take a chance at going home without a bear? Because if you do wait for, you know, a mature, say 400 pound plus bear, you're probably going to go home without one. So, you know, you have to be ready to go home without a bear too. So I always tell everyone, you know, especially guys that haven't killed a bear before, don't pass on something that you're going to regret. Like, you know, if you're going to be happy with that bear on the last day, shoot it on the first day. And, you know, then the next time you draw a tag, maybe be more picky. Two nights later, Jacob got that bear. One of the successful hunters on opening day was Dakota Williams, nephew of Chad Williams, who I filmed four years ago. Dakota's brother-in-law, Jonathan, sat with Dakota to film his hunt. What do you think? I'm ready to pull the trigger. This guy over here, he's nervous. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Now we're going to Bear Man's house. Get suited up. Hopefully yep. we get a bear down. I hope so. You never know. No. <laughs> Took me 10 years to apply for this bear tag and uh, pretty excited to get my uh, first opportunity at a bear. Yep, very excited. There's three shooters in there this morning and one picture in the daylight, so hopefully one of them shows back up here pretty soon. Well, John, uh, Ron, he set us up around like noon, 11.30 noon and got in the blind and uh, we sat there for about seven, almost seven and a half hours, and uh, about 7.20, we're sitting there and looking down the shooting lane, can't really see down the sides, you know, kind of had, had a tunnel vision looking down the shooting lane, and and uh, I'm sitting there watching, all of a sudden, all I seen this big black head stick out past the trees, like, holy cow. My heart started pumping, and so I go to raise my gun up, and I couldn't get it above the window, because this bear is just staring at me for a good 15, 20 seconds. So finally he quits looking and he starts working his way into the bait and I get my gun up on the trigger stick and he did the double lung roll and I tried putting a second round in him and he got back up and took off running. Dude, oh I got him, I he smoked him. so bad. He dropped, did you see him? He dropped. Oh, oh my, my goodness, Coda. Did you oh. see him? Yeah. He looked right at me. Yeah, he did. His head popped out. I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, Jonathan, there's a bear. Whoa. Coda, I've really got that on film. Did you get record? Oh yeah, I got it, but. Oh my God, Jonathan. Where I was sitting Jonathan, there, that's man. a 400 pound bear right there. That bear is huge. Whoa. Holy jamoly. That was not a little bear. That was huge. That was no, yeah, I know that wasn't little. That was no joke of a bear. Called John up and I think I waited by about 40 minutes because he was on another bear track and yeah, he come out and showed him the footage and John said, yeah, that's a double lung. You did good. So we went and tracked it and he didn't even make it 10 yards out of the base. I, he just, uh, he piled right up right there. Yeah, didn't go far at all. Are you serious? Woo! Oh yeah. No way. Holy cow. Holy goodies. cow. Jonathan, how would we not see him? <laughs> We're standing right there. <laughs> you gotta be that kidding me. Yeah, Dakota. Yeah. Wow, yeah, buddy. <laughs> Woo. Nice. Yes, man. Thanks, buddy. Wow. Holy smokes. <laughs> wow. Good shooting, bud. Good yeah. job, buddy. Yeah, you you blew the lungs right out of him. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, weighed 285 pounds. I, I thought he was about 400 pounds when I shot. <laughs> Yeah, I thought he was about 400 pounds. Oh, he was huge when he came in. Holy smokes, but still a good bear, big bear. First bear I've ever shot. So, yeah, pretty exciting. What are you gonna do with that bear now? Well, I'm gonna do a full body mount on him. I was gonna do a coffee table, but uh, a little big for a coffee table, so I'm gonna end up just doing a full body, you know, four legs standing on his four feet, full body mount. I just wanna thank uh, John Run and his dad and for the opportunity to let me be able to hunt this bear and it's been a great experience. Thanks to Dakota and John for the footage and congrats on that beautiful bear. For over 30 years, there's been a John Ron guiding bear hunters through the Eastern UP forests and swamps. 
and this John Run is only 29. So I just grew up, you know, around bear camp. My dad and grandpa were always guided, so I just grew up with it. Yep. Well, the bear game business started when probably we were, I was around 23 years old when I moved up here and that. And then they switched from us all being able to get a tag every year over the counter to this point system. And so it was making it so we weren't able to hunt. Um, so we decided to start, you know, spend time in the woods and guiding so people each year we could hunt still and enjoy it. Which made it nice by going to the point system, we got to meet a lot of new people. So it was pretty small back then, he did. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we just took a small amount of people. I think we have five. Yeah. And uh, we, we had a cabin down the road there um, about a mile and a half from here. And uh, yeah, they'd come up and, and we had a few bears and just been enjoying it ever since. I mainly just remember a lot of the, you know, at camp, skinning bears and all that kind of stuff. A lot of people coming back every year, made a lot of friendships. That's probably what I remember the most of throughout all the years. He pretty much took over, I would say, in his early, early 20s. He's yeah. got the leg. Yeah, and he's, he had enough knowledge. He's been doing it since he was a little boy, so by the time he was 15, 16 years old, he was already a veteran. Him and his brother both, so. Him and his brother both, yeah, yep. about three years old. Yeah, we started getting him, letting him walk through the woods, so. When he could carry a pail. Yep, so a lot of experience in them young men. Still ask you guys for advice and everything and how to, how to do everything? They pretty much listen all the time anyway. Yeah, they run stuff by us and, you know, when, it, you know, hey, Dad, what do you think? Should we set that guy here? You know, and it's either yeah or no, but they, they don't need to ask me anymore. Well, yeah, they taught me a ton, but obviously, like, technology is involved in stuff. So, you know, I use a lot of the more newer technology that they didn't have back then. I mean, back when you guys started this then, I mean, there was no trail cameras then, were there? No. No, you just had to be good. Yeah, you just hunted uh, the most active bait, you know. So you didn't know what was hitting them, though? No. Nope. You know, we still watch for, you know, if you got them sows with cubs on bait, naturally you get a lot, it looks like piles of raccoon uh, scatter around. So, you know, you could uh, pretty much tell and... Back then, we could hang things in trees, and you get a bear that could you could put bait up higher in the tree, and they would uh, a taller bear, which more than likely is war, um, would tear up the trees a little bit there and scratch. So, yeah, there was ways for us to tell back then um, tracks and that stuff. Work up the ground a little bit around the bait so you can see track size and. I can't imagine how many bears this camp has seen in 30 plus years. I asked John and John what their favorite stories were, but there are so many they couldn't pick out just one. So oh, we had, we've had a few. Most of the time it, it's uh, somebody that uh, uh, wounds one and end up having to chase it down in the middle of the night and, you know, get that taken care of. So a few people have been lost, you know. So, you know, we're out there in the middle of the night looking for them. You haven't lost anybody for good, though? No, no, we, we managed to keep them all around. Yeah, there's been some strange episodes, but it's been fun. We could sit down for hours. <laughs> yeah, we do have a lot of stories, but, you know, I guess they'll have to stay in our head for now. We've built a really good reputation, and I plan to keep it. And, you know, we've been working hard for, like, you know, over 30 years at this, so it means a lot to, to keep it going. And I now have a son, so I'm hoping that he wants to take it over and one day and keep it going again. He's already been in the woods bear baiting this year, so just turned three months old. Guy's first picture with the bear last night. Yeah, we're really looking forward to spend some time with in the woods with that young man. I'm pretty grateful to have him. <laughs> he likes the camera. Are you liking the camera? More than your dad does. <laughs> The second day, I sat with Mike LeBrake of Saginaw. This is Mike's first bear hunting season.
just been sitting here for hours. Nothing really on the pile other than blue jays. And all of a sudden, in come one, took a piece of the bait, went off to the side, in come another one. And then we had to wait for the smaller one to get out of the way before we could take the shot. Yeah, he wasn't really sitting still, was no, he? No, he wasn't. And he would face me, turn around. I could never get a side shot to the end there, so. <laughs> he said that's the first bear you've ever seen in the wild. Yep, in the wild. John and his crew showed up and successfully recovered the bear from the dense woods. Congratulations, Mike, on this beautiful boar. And thank you for letting me sit with you. This family makes it look easy, but there is much more that goes into a successful bear camp, from the team of family and friends to the knowledge gained with 30 years of experience. A lot of time and real effort. Well, you just learn so much and where the bears are are more likely to come out in daylight hours. I mean, you can get bears coming in almost anywhere, but to get them where you can harvest multiple bears in the season, it takes some knowledge there, you know, and, and the only way you learn is just time in the woods. But I think a lot of people just don't realize like how much time goes into just finding the spots. Like even on public land, you're trying to find areas where other people aren't baiting and there's way more guides than there ever has been probably you know, when we started guiding 30 years ago, I'd say there was like two or three guides in our area, and now there's probably 15 or 20. So, I mean, that's a big difference, and there's a lot more pressure on public. So just finding those spots that are, you know, where other guys aren't going into, like, you know, the thicker, nastier swamps or longer walks. John Jr. gave me a message for the DNR. The DNR listened to this at all. Let's do the right thing. Let's make it available to put a barrel out on state land. We'll put our name in phone number on it and let's stop this controversy with these wolves. Wolves don't mess with the barrel, uh, metal barrel. Plastic barrels I don't think should be on state land. No. Uh, bears like to drag them off. And, but as far as a metal barrel, just put the lid on top and they tip it over, the lid falls, the barrel sets right there, easy in, easy out, and you don't have the problem with all these other animals. And once in a while, the guides get to go bear hunting too. Yep, yeah. I had a good friend of mine uh, Jody Williams, Chad, it's something with me. Uh, she donated the, her tag to me. They've been blind for years, and so that Chad and I go out and keep them up and we set them together. Yeah, it's very cool. You know, he's killed quite a few bears. It's always a, a struggle, you know, getting him in range of the truck there because he has to hunt out of the truck because of his disability. But yeah, it's always fun seeing him hunt. You know, every year is a blessing with him. <laughs> A few years ago, the doctors told us he wasn't going to leave the hospital, you know, and that was two years ago, and now he's here bear hunting. It's, it's crazy. And I was excited to see that a few days later, John got his bear. I wish I could have been there. And quickly, a couple other things happening here in the UP. Isle Royal National Park is creating their wilderness stewardship plan, and it's open to public comment until September 26th. If you have any interest in how our national park is managed, I have a link right here to their website where you can read the full plan and also make your comments. I interviewed Liz Valencia from Isle Royale National Park last week, but there's a lot to unpack there and more than I could fit into just five, 10 minutes of the show. So I posted the full interview on my website, discovertheup.com and on my YouTube page. So go ahead and check that out. Also, the Calumet Keweenaw Sportsman's Club's annual gun and knife show is this Friday and Saturday. It's one of their primary fundraisers for their winter supplemental deer feeding program. This event offers a large spectrum of new and used firearms, ammo, knives, and other outdoor related items and collectibles. There will be food, door prizes, and raffle tickets. So if you're in the area, go help support the Keweenaw deer herd. That's all for tonight, and I hope to see you right back here next week for Upper Michigan's very own Discovering.